This week's book of the week is High Performance Habits by the homie Brendan Bouchard. Now, typically, I don't like when people's names are Brendan. It's a perversion of a good name like Brandon. Brendan is fucking weird. I hate it. But the guy wrote a good book. But I'm going to give you my top three takeaways from this book. And I think they will help you accomplish your goals. So with Brendan, you know, he's a high performance coach and he interviewed all his successful clients and it was thousands of them. And he figured out the most successful among them had three habits in common. And the first one of it, he said it different, but I'm going to say it the way I understood it and the way I feel like talking about it is <laughs> state control he didn't use those words but that's the words i want to use because this is how i explain it when i when i teach this so basically what state control is is the ability to control your mental state your state of mind your emotions under any circumstances and this is important because a lot of people are looking for things to make them happy sometimes when people hear me talk about money they say hey making money won't make you happy well, it's not supposed to it's not money's job to make you happy money's only job is to be exchanged for goods and services <laughs> that's the only thing money is supposed to do your emotions are your responsibility right so if things can make you happy they can also make you sad which means you're not in control and the, to the degree you let outside circumstances or where people control your emotions that's the degree you are not in control of your emotions it's a weakness what you want to do as much as possible is divorce your circumstances from your emotions the more you have the ability to control your emotions regardless of the circumstances the more mentally stronger you are there are going to be some things that affect your mental state right like if the homies die family members die you get your arm chopped off or something is going to affect you right but you want to separate your emotions from circumstances as much as possible and the way to do that is to take control of your state there are basically three ways to control your emotions the first one is your environment that's the first way to control your emotions and right an environment first of all it's your location like your actual physical environment but it's also the people you surround yourself with so for example if you just clean your room you might feel better right because now your environment has changed and it it, it will actually affect your mood if you're at a beach or an amusement park or something like that it will affect your mood differently than if you're in i don't know a fucking alley next to a dumpster or if you're in a landfill or some shit right your your actual physical location will affect your mood this is why one of the reasons i like to start my day off at sunrise i take a walk out on the atlantic ocean it's across the street and as the sun rises and that puts me in a good mood it's a great way to start the day i'm out there i'm seeing you know i see manatee sometimes dolphins i see i see those and i see other like sea life and shit they wildlife they come and say what's up to me and i'm in a better mood you know the, something about the ocean and nature it actually makes me feel better your actual environment can, can affect your emotions even more than that is the people you're around moods are contagious let's say you've been in a room everything's fine in the room all the people everybody's in a good state but then somebody comes in they come in with a stank attitude you ever notice how that changes the mood of everyone in the room by contrast you may be in a room and maybe a toddler runs in there and all happy holding some motherfucking transformers or thomas the trains <laughs> and everybody lights up or like a puppy runs in the room and everybody lights up that's because people's can affect your emotions so emotions are actually contagious right so you want to really control your environment and the people around you that's one of the ways to control your emotions all right it's the weakest of the three. Third way to control your emotions is with your physiology and when i say physiology it's the way you move your body the way you move your body controls your emotions right no ditty if you wanted to make yourself tired you could just start holding your body like you do that for long enough you're gonna get tired if you wanted to get hype about something you can you would hold your body adopt the mannerisms of somebody who was excited after a certain amount of time you would actually start to feel that so there's studies that show that people release dopamine and different neurochemicals that actually make them happy in their brain when they smile or when they laugh because motion creates emotion your emotions can change your physiology but they also work in reverse your physiology can actually direct your emotions the actual chemicals in your brain change the way you hold your body the actual way you move the movement even your expressions so when i'm around people i 
change their emotions because I don't want theirs to affect mine. So if you ever walked around with me, like Nima's seen this, you know, I go to people, I'm fucking slapping high fives to people. If I'm at a restaurant, I, I'm cheering up the waitress or the waiter, like I'm showing love to everybody, but not necessarily just because I'm a nice guy because I don't want their fucked up emotions <laughs> to infiltrate mine. Like I'm trying to guard mine, so I'm going on offense. Sometimes the best defense is a, is a strong offense. I take it upon myself to change the state of everyone around me. And it becomes kind of like a habit. You're not gonna be fucking sad around me. So when I had my office in New York and we had employees in the office before we all went remote, one thing I would do is if I felt like the energy in the office was off, I would stop everything. Everybody stopped working and I made everybody jump on the, the trampoline. I kept a trampoline there. <laughs> and one thing I know is you, you cannot be in a bad mood if you're on the trampoline. Like if you jump on the trampoline for a while, everybody starts smiling. It's just a, it's just a thing. It's, it's almost impossible. So I still have a trampoline here. I have one in the in the on one of my balconies. There's five of them. But on one of them. <laughs> I have a I have a balcony and I and I sometimes I make people get on the balcony. I'm like, hey man, it's house rules. First time you come here, you gotta jump on the rules are rules. And because I want to change their state when they're in the crib. In order to do that, I gotta change their physiology, right? But it's, you can also change yours. So sometimes that trampoline is for me. If I just feel like I'm in a funk, I get on that trampoline, start bouncing like a fucking jackass. And it's hard to stay in a in a bad mood <laughs> when you when you jump on the trampoline, man. It's a weird thing. Most important thing is what you focus on. Focus, it could be what, what you think about, your thoughts, and it's also what you're actually observing. So when I say observing, it could be the, the stuff you're consuming, whether on social media or TV, the music you're listening to. If you're listening to some music, it's controlling your focus. If you're watching TV, it's controlling your focus. And it's super important because focus is the number one way to control your emotions. So a lot of times when people are depressed, they're thinking about how bad their life is or they're thinking about things that happened in the past or regrets or, or how bad things are right now. There's a reason in automobiles, the windshield is bigger than the rear view because that's what you're supposed to look through, man. You gotta look at where you're going, focus on where you're going instead of where, you, where, where, where you've been. So whatever you think about, you're gonna feel, whether it's real or not. Let's say you have a pet. Imagine your pet crawls in the room, but something ain't right. He, he crawls next to you. He, he looks up and he look and then dies right in front of you. Imagine that. Some of y'all got mad. Some of y'all got sad just now thinking about it. And it's not even real. It's like your pet is fine. It, it was just an exercise. <laughs> Nothing happened to your pet. Your pet is fine. It's going to live forever. I promise. Think about it. It wasn't even real. Some people got sad just thinking about it. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel whether it's real or not. So sometimes people are just focusing on past shit so much they build the habit of focusing on the past it's controlling their emotions in a negative way now they actually built the habit of negativity because they habitually focus on on negative shit and that's what happens it's also what you observe you know for me man i curate my environment and what i consume i don't follow any pages or or youtube pages or instagram pages that are promoting any negativity anybody's talking about how bad shit is like i, I don't want to focus on that because you know there's always good in the world there's always bad in the world i don't have to focus on the bad why would i it, it probably won't help me right if anything it's gonna fuck up my mood it's gonna fuck up my state so i only focus on where I'm trying to go. Even the music I listen to. I don't listen to no sad music. I don't want to hear no rap songs about how poor you grew up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to hear music about balling and shot calling, getting money. My alarm on my phone, ringtone, is I get money by 50 cent, right? It's like an affirmation for me. I want to focus on that. I get money, money I got. That's what I want to focus on. Focus on where we're going. So I curate my environment and I curate everything I, I, I observe, right? So you got to control your, your state. So Brendan noticed that high performers were good at controlling their state. Another thing they did was when they wanted to accomplish something, they, they changed their identity. For example, here's a good example. People say, man, I, how do I quit drinking alcohol, man? Or I need to stop drinking so much. Really, I just say, I don't drink, right? Problem solved, but it, it's different. It's like, I'm not trying to, to not drink anymore. I assume the identity of someone who just doesn't drink. Hey, I don't drink. People try to give me something, some alcohol. They try to get me to drink. Oh, it's a special case. You can just have one drink. I, no, I don't drink. And that usually just shuts them down. If I said, oh man, I'm trying not to drink. Then people would try to pressure me. Oh man, I just quit drinking. No, I, I didn't quit drinking. I'm, I don't drink. I used to smoke cigarettes since I was like, 14. I'm from the fucking ghetto, bro. 
<laughs> there's a lot of shit that's probably not good for you. And I just quit. I didn't say, oh, I'm trying to quit smoking cigarettes. And I, I just quit straight cold turkey. And I said, no, nah, I don't smoke. I don't drink. And it's it, when you assume the identity, it's easier than trying to do the things, right? So I don't try to eat better. I don't try to eat healthy. Nah, man, I follow the ketogenic diet, man. I burn more calories than I consume because I'm cutting. I track my macros every day. You got to assume the identity. Instead of trying to do a thing, assume the identity of the person who does it. Then then it's like not an option anymore. If you're trying to quit drinking, then you just a try, baby. Every time I hear somebody say the word try, I'll be like, I'm like you you doing what? Man, I'm trying to, you, you what? You motherfucking try, baby? I don't even let people talk like that around me. Why though? Because listen, man, you're not gonna fucking control. You're not gonna affect my state with that try baby energy. You know what I'm saying? You can be a try baby on your own time. When you around me, you either doing shit or you're not. And the third thing that Brendan noticed from his high performance students is they had a big purpose, big perk. All right. So you can say that you want to accomplish a goal, but it's stronger if you got a purpose behind it. For example, one of the things that I think about a lot is if I want to be the most influential person in my son's life as he ages, like right now, I, I, I probably am, or maybe it's his mom, one of, one of the two, one of us. But as he gets older, I'm going to be competing with celebrities, you know what I'm saying, uh, rappers and shit. If I'm not fucking maxing out my potential, some of these other motherfuckers may have more influence over him than I, than I do. He may be you know, l looking up to somebody with more money than me or more successful than me. And there's always going to be those people. But if I'm at a level of success where it would only make sense for him to listen to me, oh, this motherfucker knows what he's talking about. Some of y'all might believe I'm there now, right? Because you're watching this. But <laughs> I just think like, you know, down the line, he's six now. In 10 years, I can accomplish a lot in 10 years. And my goal is to be so successful, I'll have s way more influence over him than almost anyone else can. Like some of y'all daddies was bus drivers and shit, right? So <laughs> they tell you, hey, you gotta work hard. And you you're like, what, so I can drive a bus like you? Motherfucker, shut up. I'm gonna sell this crack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sell this crack. <laughs> like Deshaun, man, he got us, he got a Mercedes. You driving the bus, nigga, why should I listen to you? I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I want to be the most influ influential person in his life. And I think about that shit all the time. And it gives me like a better, a bigger purpose than just, oh, I want to make a bunch of money. But I also think about y'all too. I know some of you guys come from the same backgrounds that I come from or similar backgrounds or maybe even worse, like Nima. He came from the desert. I don't even know if they got homes in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> I come from the south side of Chicago, man. It's like a fucking Chief Keep video <laughs> where I'm from, man. <laughs> like, no bullshit. Like, I'm south side. And when I was in the, that position, I remember it felt hopeless. And this is weird to say now, right? But <laughs> I saw Diddy and he became successful with this when I was a kid. I was like, oh shit, man, you could do it being a businessman. He kind of like influenced me <laughs> to want to accomplish more now listen i ain't know he was on that wild shit i just saw a successful a successful brother hey, listen i ain't know all the other shit going on we we all just found out about that shit but it was also jay-z as well like i was like oh these motherfuckers come from similar situations as me all right and it, it really inspired me like jay-z and diddy <laughs> i swear to god it really inspired me now they did it in entertainment and you know i do it with, with like business you know youtube don't even make a whole bunch of money youtube doesn't even make me money right i actually have a business <laughs> youtube i spend money to be on youtube like i, I pay nima and the other one play i pay nima and harry like way more than i make from youtube ad revenue right but i make money in real business i i know that there's somebody from the hood you know who's thinking damn oh he did it and, and it gives you hope because I, I know living in those situations for me you know on the south side Chicago, it feels hopeless that's why you know kids they don't mind joining a gang or some shit selling drugs doing crime because you know they don't they don't, i know they don't think that they can grow up and be hedge fund managers or some shit like that so i think about that all the time it's like oh shit i want to inspire people the way you did he <laughs> So it's like a bigger purpose than just me wanting to make some money and ball and buy Richard Mills and shit. It's like, it's really a bigger purpose, like to inspire y'all, inspiring my son. I think about that shit all the time. And it also stops me from doing anything super reckless as well. If I do some fucking wild shit, it's like news. And then it's like, damn, Brandon fell off. Ain't, ain't nothing to believe in. Kind of like what Diddy, what happened to Diddy? He's like, fuck, man. 
damn, you was my you was my role model, homie. I didn't know you was doing all this fucking wacky shit. And it, it kind of like fucks with me up. <laughs> and I don't want to do that to y'all. So it stops me from doing anything like crazy. I mean, I wouldn't I'd have no intentions of doing no diddy shit. <laughs> I can't get caught in the whorehouse now. I'm going to let y'all down. Uh, I think about that all day. It gives you a bigger purpose. Listen, those are some of the insights I got from High Performance Habits by Brendan Broussard. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. I, I found it to be a, a very good book. Five star. Five star review from Big Brandon Carter. All right.